Brody Burkhoff facing off for Peterborough against Quinn Pallas. And Pallas comes up with the first faceoff win. Burkhoff hounding him, rubs it into the boards. And Briar Jonathan sets up in the offensive zone. Jake Kranz will hand it off, and Luke Laskowitz will get things rolling. A big pick that gets, goes uncalled in the first. No, yes, the first goal of the game. I thought Ryan Masters may have got that one, but Pallas followed up, scooped the rebound, and just tucked it home. You don't get to see it on the replay, but definitely was a big pick leading to it. Anyway, one nothing snipers. 20 seconds into the game. Palace has it again, another face-off win. And that one's picked off. Nick Finley will head back the other way. He's got Riley Campbell with him. <clears throat> nice effort by Marcus Elvin to get out there and take away the, the angle towards that for Campbell. So they just decide to hand it off to the offensive players. Caleb Wiles. Pass over to Matt Croak. That's Matt Benedict, number 34 for Peterborough. There's a save by Chase Martin, but then it's followed up and tapped in, but they're going to call a crease as the Peterborough player landed in the crease. Six Nations wearing their orange with the black shoulder caps. Peterborough wearing special jerseys today. Oh, there's a behind the back shot by Tory Van Every Big save by Masters. That was headed for the corner. Peterborough with the special St. Patrick's weekend jerseys. <laughs> St. Patrick's Day was a couple days ago. Brett Coons with the big hit, but it doesn't turn the ball over. And Danton Miller will head into the offensive zone. Hands it off to Travis Longboat. There's Lane Smith with the twister, but Ryan Masters scoops that one up, and Eric Schul will run the ball out. It's a 33 on 33 matchup there. Schul against Smith. As the bolts throws it into the corner and gets a whack from Elvin. Croak running. He's got the bolts open. Now that we have a moving pick call on Josh Wasson, and the snipers will go back the other way as we're almost two minutes in. I'm Stephen Stamp. This is Arena Lacrosse League action on JVI Sports Network. Tori Van Every with a little spin. Shoots low. Masters had that entire side cover. There was nothing to shoot at. Outlet pass coming off the bench is Caleb Wiles. He's got Ashton Jacobs over on him, spins underneath him, behind the back, nice save by Martin. Good hustle by Cody McMahon to get the loose ball. He had a man in front, Jeff McNulty, but waited too long, and McNulty was covered and then left the area just as McMahon was passing it to him. Wiles takes it. Thought he had a cutter in the back door, but Matt Benedict was picked up. That shot goes off of Martin's arm, comes out to McMahon. He gets there before Van Every, but then he drops it. Now there's a battle for it. Jacobs looks like he might get it. Now it rolls out again, and it's a loose ball. Not sure if anyone established possession, so we might have a fresh 30. We do have a fresh 30. So peterborough has got lots of time as Benedict will set up. Over to Wasson. You'll note if you get a look at the names on the back and seem a little confused, there's a big flattening play by Tory Van Every. to absolutely knock down. Dan Mickle over on the far side. But uh, all the Timberman names have O in front of them. Even the guys whose names are Mick something. So we have O. Mick Williams. There's Pete Rennie playing. Dion Lane Smith, but he rips it over the shoulder of Masters. Burkhoff wins this one as he was facing off against Martin Whitaker. Whitaker chasing him down, but Burkhoff's going to circle back and hand it off. Burkhoff handed a game misconduct yesterday after a fight and uh, was initially suspended for a couple of games for accumulation of game misconducts, but the Timberman have appealed. From what I saw, it's a pretty good appeal. I would uh, I'd be inclined to say he did not deserve a game misconduct for the aggressor yesterday in the fight, but we'll see how that works out. It's a fine line. Longboat passes over to the far side. There's a shot sidearm off Masters into the corner. And Laskowitz goes after it. Doesn't pick it up, though. Garrett Lewis comes away with it. He's surrounded. Gets it out to help. Nice job to get it to his helper. And Nick Finley is running. He's knocked flat. Jumps up and heads to the bench. Here come the Timberman. And there's another big hit by Marcus Elvin. Six Nations playing a tough game today. Croak tracks it down. They've got three to shoot, so he's just going to let it fly, and he almost gets that one in, a bouncer that went up and ro rode up the arm of Chase Martin. We're going to have a too-many-men call. 
Brody Burkoff, the in-home for Peterborough, goes and serves the two minutes or less. Lane Smith goes down to Tory Van Every. Trying to work for a shot there. Pete Rennie all over him. Good movement down low by Rennie. Oh, the nice save by Masters on the shot from Las Laskowitz. Laskowitz loading up goes to Paulus. Behind the back, it's too high for Laskowitz. He tracks it down. They've still got 20 on the shot clock right now, though. There's a shot right into the top corner. Lane Smith picks one corner. Now he picks the other. That's number 26 on the season for Lane Smith. Palace lining up once again. This time he's against Brett Coons as Burkoff is still in the box serving the second of the too many men penalties. Of course, Burkoff not the in-home, it's just another player. The uh, first, the in-home serves the first too many men. Then you just have to pick somebody after that if, if there's another. Croak back over to Mickle. Matt Benedict bounces it back over. Still 107 left on the power play for Six Nations. Caleb Wiles was flattened in front of the net. And he's gonna have a quick word with the officials. He feels like he's gotten a bit of a rough ride up there. Longboat takes the ball and Six Nations goes back to the power play. Pass across is picked off, Finley Trying to work his way through three guys. Gets it ahead, great play, and Campbell is all alone. Breaks in, scores, nice bouncer. And it's a shorthanded goal for the Timberman. And boy, nice play by Campbell, who, as we said, three snipers around him. He fights his way through a couple of them as the third is coming to lay the lumber down. He just shovels the pass ahead to Riley Campbell and springs him for that breakaway. Austin, J Ashton Jake, or sorry, Sowery Longboat was going after him and couldn't quite get there. There's a pass by Briar Jonathan. That's behind Palace. It's going to be scooped up, though, by Tyler Albrecht. Six Nations is missing some key players today. Tom Monterey with the suspension. Joel Shepley gone. Roger Weiss gone. Craig Point gone. And Von Harris is with the Calgary Roughnecks, so he's not with the team at the moment. There's an outside shot, though. It's more about who is here, and Luke Laskowitz is one of those guys. It's 3-1, to one, just like that. The outside rip. Laskowitz finds some, some twine. Six Nations once again with possession off the faceoff. They get a shot, but Masters makes the save. Of course, it's 4-1, sorry. That's uh, last quit's goal, the fourth for Six Nations. Lane Smith with a couple, and Quinn Pallas, of course, with the early one right off the faceoff. Croak looking for someone. Double team now. Gets through it. Over to McNulty, who hits Mickle. He's going to circle around the top, a little pick by McMahon. They hit the cutter. Croak, he stopped. Big save by Chase Martin, who's been playing very well for the Snipers. A bit of a slow start to the season, but has really got going. There's Van Every going to the box. Battle for the loose ball, and Six Nations eventually wins it. Danton Miller with the shot, just missed replicating the... Goal by, by uh, Lane Smith earlier. Jake Kranz just misses that ball rolling on the floor, so it goes over and back. Timberman will get possession. Benedict has a man back door, tries to get it over to Mickle, but it's a little too high. There wasn't a lane. Big hit along the boards. Six Nations comes out with it. A little shovel pass by Albrecht is a bit too soft and doesn't get there, but there's a nice four check. And now the ball pops out again and it's scooped up once more by Josh Wasson. Neither team valuing the ball there for a little stretch. And here comes Caleb Wiles. He's going to let it rip off the chest pad of Chase Martin, but he gets it back straight to him. A quick pass to Croak. What a save. Martin gets the glove on it. McNulty will set a pick as Croak rolls around to the top. That one bounces off a player in front. Wiles gets it, one hand pass. 17 on the shot clock for Peterborough as Mickle goes down low to McNulty. Wiles dives, but Martin is there on the post. The air Wiles doesn't work, and Six Nations gets the ball again.
Danton Miller passes it off. Long boat looking for a lane. Miller can't catch that one, and it looks like Rennie will get there first. Ball still free. Spin move, Miller all alone to the net, shoots far side, nice save. Actually missed the net, they're saying. So now Peterborough gets the ball, they've got a man off the bench, can they get it to him? Burkhoff looking for Mickle, but can't, or McMahon, but can't find him. Two players on him, swims through them, fighting his way through, goes to the net, and he's dragged, dragged down. That's gonna be a holding penalty to Six Nations for dragging Burkhoff, and he has drawn a penalty. Safe to say he's probably taken more than he's drawn, but that was a great effort by Brody Burkhoff. Fighting through two players and going to the net. Benedict thought about the shot. Now Wiles will rip it. Stopped and caught by Chase Martin. And Peterborough goes to the power play. Slow start for the Timberman, but they are definitely starting to find their stride here. McMahon up top. McNulty thought about the shot. McMahon goes to Croak. Oh, and McMahon from the outside finds a corner, low glove side on Chase Martin. Power play goal makes it four to two and the Timbermen start to crawl back. McMahon, his sixth goal of the year. Hasn't been putting the ball in the net a lot, but he is third on the team in assists with 21. Tim Bergen leading the club. He's not here today, wasn't here yesterday, had a, a commitment this weekend. Pedro picks off a pass, here comes Lewis the other way. He's got Briar Jonathan on him, gives it to Cole McWilliams. <clears throat> Hands it off to Croak. McWilliams is going to go to the bench, check and see if he's playing defense. He is usually an offensive player, but he's headed to the back door. Let's we'll see if he works his way up. He may have just had a long shift. Pass in front, doesn't quite connect with Benedict. Two on one developing for Six Nations. The pass is too far for Albrecht. He's gonna track it down in the corner, but they could have had a break. Jacobs just got a little too much air under that one. Pete Rennie taking away the angle for Albrecht. Lane Smith with it, he's already got two, and we're still 2.41 from the end of the first quarter. 10 on the shot clock, he lets it rip, saved by Masters, but another one is Miller was right there for the rebound. And a nice show of sportsmanship as Danton Miller falling to the ground, and Eric Schul kind of cushions his blow, holding him up a little bit. His play had been blown down. Travis is a bolt. This just kind of wraps up around his face. It's Marcus Elvin all over him. There's a pass to the back door, and Cody McMahon just flat out missed it. Scooped up. There's McMahon pressuring Chancey Johnson. Now McMahon lands on top of him, and Johnson, known for a bit of a hot temper. We'll see. He doesn't seem too upset after that one. Oh, yeah, he's going to go and cross-check somebody in the back. So I guess he did <laughs> get a little more upset than I thought. That was Caleb Wiles who bore the brunt of that one. Laskowitz backs away, hands it off to Briar Jonathan. Shane Adams is gonna go far side. Laskowitz sheds a check, gets a shot off right in the chest pad, those are bolts. Looking ahead, nobody there, so he flips it behind from McWilliams, who does seem to be coming out the back door, so. A little change in roles for McWilliams. <laughs> He is a plugger though. He will absolutely work and work and work. So good trait to have in a defender. Wasson takes it off the bench and immediately moves it over to Benedict. Snapped stick by Tyler Albrecht. He's gonna have to play D without one. See if the Timberman can take advantage. They've only got three on the shot clock. Albrecht can't do anything except get in the way, but that will be enough as he earns a 30 second violation on Peter and heads off to the bench. Now, when play was blown down, one of the Six Nations players picked up half of Tyler Albrecht's broken stick and just took it back to the bench with him. And I don't actually know if, when play is stopped, if that's a penalty or if you're allowed to do that. Looks like Matt Croak will take the draw. Brett Coons is on the floor, so I'm not sure why Coons wouldn't go and take it. And they're actually lining up four, all of the Peterborough players behind, they're lining up like a hockey face-off. It's an interesting one. Maybe they think because it's down by the blue line, by the face-off dot, you gotta do it hockey style. Palace wins it for Six Nations, runs behind the net, and <laughs> Matt Croak runs into a whole lot of Chase Martin as he steps in front. Nice run by Palace. 
shovel pass is knocked down by Pete Rennie. He's the first one there. Travis Longboat on him, but Rennie gets it. Looks up the floor, man off the bench. McMahon running in. He's got one goal recently. He's going to take another. Peeper goes for the two for one with 45 seconds left in the quarter. Trying to get a shot off. Now Six Nations will have a possession. And if they do not score, Peterborough should get the ball back. Although you never know with rebounds and loose balls. Laskowitz cuts down low past Shule. Shule stays with him. Campbell helps. Go up top to Paulus. Denton Miller thinks about ripping it. Does. It's off the shoulder of Masters. And there's the problem with the two for one approach. Is that Lane Smith gets the last shot for the sniper. 17 seconds left. They're not going to pull the goalie. And then flipping it up. I'm not sure why he did that, but Eric Shule is wide open. All alone. Shoots. Big save by Chase Martin. And it's going to be track count. Four seconds left. Laskowitz just kind of flipped the ball up in the air. And uh, Shule just ran away with it. Second quarter about to get underway. Coons out there to face off against Pallas. Pallas goes with the standing approach. Coons with the kneeling approach. It's a standoff so far. Ball pops up and Pallas has it. He's running with the ball. Oh, he has it in the front of his stick. Okay, I thought he had it in the back of his stick. And of course, you can only take one step with the ball in the front of your stick. The Arena Lacrosse League does play National Lacrosse League rules with the exception of coaches' challenges. Plus, there's only one media timeout per quarter. That's after the halfway mark rather than two after each five minutes. Although we didn't take one in the first quarter. We just kept flying along. That's pretty good. It's a fast game. Exciting. It's been a lot of fun so far. Colton Armstrong, who was one of the three stars yesterday as Peter lost to Toronto. He had himself a whale of a game. Timmerman on the offense. Benedict working through a check. Nice little pick from Wasson as the ball comes across to Mickel. There's a shot from Wiles. That one doesn't find it. Now that's a good shot selection though. Just a nice save by Chase Martin. Here's Sawi Longboat. He's always listed as Greg Sawi Longboat, so you never know which, which name he'd prefer. I didn't get a chance to talk to him before the game, but he is on the roster of Sawi, so that's what we're going with today. Danton Miller, watched by Burkoff. Miller's gonna shoot. Chess, actually there's a face save, I think, by Ryan Masters. I think they're gonna blow it down. Yeah, Ra Masters is rattled. And uh, nice call by Mike Sullivan. Laskowitz hands it down low. and Martin Whitaker playing some offense, number 10. Penalty coming to Peterborough. Ball scooped up by Briar Jonathan. Colton Armstrong trying to pin him against the boards. Great hustle by Arm Armstrong. The pass out though, there's a hard shot by Laskowitz that bounces off someone. So it's a touch, no over and back. Burkoff heads to the penalty box. Lane Smith up to Danton Miller at the top. The man down low is Quinn Pallas. There's Laskowitz. Tory Van Every starts to pop up from the crease. Smith shoots, it's picked off cleanly by Lewis. Juggles it a bit, then lobs it ahead to Wasson. He's gonna run to the bench and let, let Matt Croak come off the bench and get it, but he bobbled and Danton Miller is able to get back. Now Croak is gonna let it fly. Saved by Martin, but Croak will be the first guy there. Jake Kranz chops down on him. They're gonna say a, a loose ball push will give possession to the Timberman. They're shorthanded. Burkhoff's deuce is for legal cross check, I believe they said. There's a bouncer over to Mickel. He runs across the top. Eight on the shot clock. So Mickel's going to lob it down to Croak. He climbs the ladder to get it. Three to shoot. He's going to spin. Lands on his butt and tries to get the shot off. Aston Jacobs was kind of pushing up against Croak. Then let go and Croak's own momentum dropped into the floor it looked like. Jacobs may have helped him a little bit on the way down. Laskowitz, thinking about shooting, he's gonna go down to Paulus. 12 on the shot clock, the one behind the Peterborough net not working, but it, there is eight at the other end. Longboat up top. Smith, too much room for him, but his shot is stopped by Masters. Breakout pass, oh it's just too far. Riley Campbell has one already today. Was looking for another shorthanded marker, but couldn't get that pass. Masters didn't have a big lane, so he had to try and zip a line drive through and didn't quite connect. There's Palace thinking about the shot, shoots it. That's another one off the face of Masters. 
shakes this one off a little easier. They do have great masks. At least the, the Peterborough goalies do. Six Nations goalies both wearing field box, field lacrosse helmets, which I don't think are give you as good protection, but Pallas shoots. That one's wide, bounces back. Finley almost had it for a break. He would have been gone. Smith, though, to Laskowitz. Laskowitz, arm save by Masters as he clamps it down against his side. Hits the man off the bench, but Wasson couldn't go because the man wasn't at the bench. The defensive player coming off. Peterborough being very careful to not take another too many men. What a beauty! Travis Longboat just drifts one into the top corner, draws Masters near side, and then floats it over above the shoulder and into the corner. And Lane Smith, number 33, who has a couple of goals today, has three years of junior lacrosse left. The power play goal releases Burkoff, but it's going to be Coons taking the face off. Eventually, Ashton Jacobs comes up with it, makes a nice pass over. But to Kranz, but Kranz gets stripped by Cole McWilliams. Great job. And he wants to press the pace, but there's no chance they don't have enough green jerseys up there. Those green jerseys look a lot like the old Chicago Shamrocks jerseys. Of course, a lot of ties to Peterborough from that team. Uh, their head coach was Jamie Batley. There's a shot from the outside, McNulty late in the shot clock. Josh Wasson, who's playing for the Timberman today, did play for the Chicago Shamrocks. So definitely a bit of a tie for him. Maybe a little feeling of nostalgia wearing this jersey. I love the, uh, the plaid on the shoulder caps right down to the sleeve. Shane Adams passes the ball down low. There's a cutter. He hits Torrey Van Every and nice save by Cole Murray, his first action of the game. Laskowitz handling it in one hand. We're going to have a moving pick call against Six Nations. Peter will go the other way. Eric Schul's up the floor. He wants a call. We're going to have a penalty now to Six Nations. Smith broke, violated the rules there. And Peterborough will go to the power play. They trail 5 2, 8 840 to go here in the half. And Ryan Masters has made his way back into the Peterborough net. McMahon loads it up, shoots. That one's high, but it does go off Martin. Bounces out to Croak. Thought about letting it rip, but saw he didn't have the angle he wanted, so he's going to wait. Over to McMahon. Jonathan with a little one hand whack on him. That pass somehow got through to Caleb Wiles. He gets it back. He'll go behind the back. Bouncer by Mickle doesn't get through. Hits a player and Kranz grabs it off the floor, off the rebound. He's running the floor. Thought for a moment about making the pass to Marcus Elvin, but decided to slow things down. See how much time they can kill. Palace tosses it up high. Danton Miller, talk about high, he threw it really high. Bounces off the backboards right out to him, but it catches in the turf. Palace comes up with it, he's winning a lot of faceoffs today. Nice pass to Torrey Van Every. Thought he was gonna go behind the back, which is one of his favorite shots, but pulls it down instead. They're gonna kill some more time on the penalty. Oh, there's a shot from Luke Laskowitz. There was a hole and Ryan Masters never closed it. And it's six to two. Shorthanded goal for the snipers. We're back underway. Peterborough with possession on the power play still. Dan Mickle is up top. Caleb Wiles is going to roll from the bottom over to the top of the formation. Passes down low. Croak gets it back to him. Wiles will rip it. That one's knocked down by the stick of Jake Kranz. 11 10 on the shot clock now. Wiles in the top. He's going to shoot. Misses. Comes out to Kranz. He's going to run the floor. There will be a Peterborough player coming off the bench. That's Garrett Lewis gets out there. Nice hustle by Wiles to get to the bench. But Kranz still gets a shot. And Masters is discombobulated facing the end of his, his net. Ball is loose, but it's come up with by Martin Whitaker. Lane Smith out of the box, immediately runs into the offensive set. <laughs> Stumbles, there are a lot of rolls in the turf again. In the winter, it doesn't, come, it doesn't lay down as much. And Smith, looking a little shaken up as he got up gingerly. Now he's trotting to the bench, looking okay. But keep an eye on him as Peter goes to the offense. So Bolts with a head of steam. Camp Barry ran through a bunch of orange jerseys to the net and then just was stopped by Chase Martin's foot. Peter wants a penalty as the stick got up in the face. That was Michael Holmes, whose stick got right in the face mask of 
Those are bolts. Martin swallows up that rebound. Player way up the floor all alone. Goal, beautiful play by Tyler Albrecht. He leaked out when he saw the shot. Nobody went back with him. Coons facing off against Whitaker, matching number 10s. It's supposed to be numbers 10, the actual correct plural. Whitaker, I don't suppose anybody really cares. McWilliams covering him, forces an errant pass. And Will McWilliams down and knocks it loose again. Now he's lost his stick. He's going to run back and get it. Smart play. And there's Col Colton Armstrong coming up with the ball. Can he get it to the open man? Does he even know the open man's there? As he is flattened by a pair of Six Nations defenders. There's a shot. There's another face mask shot. Actually, I think it hit the ch chest protector. We're going to have a penalty coming to the Timberman. So Six Nations with a 7-2 lead will go to the power play. Laskowitz moves it down to, to Paulus. Cutting Tory Van Every gets the pass. Nowhere to shoot. Tries to pass it back to Paulus. Shules on him as the ball is loose on the floor. They're still working for it. Now Joe Wasson, but it's Lane Smith that gets it. Hard shot by Miller, goes right off the board out to Lazowitz. He shoots. So checking from behind, call. Which was pretty accurate. Right on top of the crease. Palace goes for the far side. They've beaten Masters a couple of times there, but this time he closed off the space and it hit the post anyway. Stanton Miller steps back. Oh, pass almost picked off cleanly by Finley. He just got a bit of it. The ball's on the floor. Laskowitz tries to pick it up. Finley almost tapped it ahead to himself. And there's a great job to get stick on stick and send the shot by Laskowitz high. Boy, Nick Finley, every game is doing some things that are just very impressive on the lacrosse floor. I tell you, he's a kid that I did not have. I rank prospects for the National Lacrosse League draft every year. And I did not have him really as part of my list for this year yet. And I'm telling you, somebody is going to take a chance on this kid, especially if he has a great summer. He could move well up in the draft the way he's playing in this league right now. Really helps. The Arena Lacrosse League does like to bill itself as a, and is, is positioning itself as a development league for players to go on to the National Lacrosse League and doing a great job. And playing the NLL rules is a big part of that. Lane Smith up top to Miller. Oh, dead overhand, right into the belly pad of Masters. Laskowitz, fake, fake scores. And that's just great silky hands by Luke Laskowitz to make it eight to two, the power play goal. Palace pulls it out to himself. Boy, Quinn Palace started showing that last year when he started taking some face-offs, and he is really dominating at the dock today. Did not realize watching him come up through junior, that he was a face-off guy, but he is quite good at it. There's Albrecht going around the outside. Shane Adams going around the outside. Outlet pass. Peter are trying to get the transition game going, hitting men coming off the bench, but Six Nations already has a bunch of orange jerseys back there. Pretty sharp jerseys, too. Matt Benedict circling. Gets to McNulty. He drifted down too low. Penalty coming to Six Nations. McNulty... Tried to sneak one into the near side. Didn't get it. We're going to have a holding call. Wasson down to Croak. Wiles is at the top and gets the pass. He's going to let it fly low. Goes off of Martin up into the mesh. And it's Peter possession in a fresh 30. Jonathan and McCrans up top. Marcus Elvin and Braden Hill down low. Nice backdoor pass, but Watson couldn't get, couldn't get a shot off. They try and go quick stick to Croak, but there was no shot there. He didn't get it. That's a push in the back. Loose ball foul. That'll be a fresh 30. There was only eight seconds left on the shot clock for the Timberman. So Hill just slightly over enthusiastic. Probably could have just kind of kind of bear hugged a little there. That shot doesn't get get through. Well, it does get through, but Chase Martin stops. It doesn't get through the last line of defense, and then the ball is just dropped by Mickel. Jake Kranz trying to get it ahead to himself. Mickel gets a stick on it, and Wiles will flick it over to Matt Croak. 18 on the shot clock. Wiles at the top. Spins. 
Hits a cutting croak. Behind the back, tries Croak is one of the more creative offensive players you'll see, and he tried an over the head shot with his back to the net and missed it. 13 on the shot clock as Croak comes up with it. Josh Watson takes a smack on the arm from Jake Kranz. Behind the back, oh, McMahon just misses near side after a lovely pass from Wiles. Two to shoot, so Watson will just go dead overhand and rip it. And it's a 30 second violation as that shot went wide of the net. Caleb Wiles. Demonstrates exactly how you put the ball down to avoid taking a delay a game penalty. Laskowitz has it. <coughs> Luke Laskowitz, a very talented player, went to Robert Morris University. And, oh, here's a drive to the net. Oh, nice save, Masters, as Lane Smith was all alone. And Eric Shaw with a huge edge as Tory Van Every lost his stick. Velasquez has a great fan club. His parents and his girlfriend, uh, she's from Pittsburgh where Robert Morris is located, but they are at a lot of games. They love coming and watching him play. Penalty coming to Six Nations. That pass is picked off. Oh, wait, there's a... <laughs> Confusing because play wasn't blown down when Six Nations came up with the ball. Play wasn't blown down and the Six Nations player actually f threw it into the open net. And uh, you can't blame him. I don't think you can give him a delay a game call when the whistle wasn't blown. So I think everybody was upset on that play. Peterborough goes to the power play. They trail eight to two with just 25 seconds left in the half. There's about a two second difference in the shot and game clock. That was very close to being in. Wiles thinks it was in. And you know what? The, the post is behind the goal line at this point. So you could argue that that was in as it hit the post and came out. Now I think it moved the post when it hit, so, so it wouldn't count, but if the post is back and it hits the inside of the post, that's a goal. Kranz, great pickoff. He's having himself a game today and running the floor with six seconds left. He's gonna stop, he's got the shot, bounces it. You can hear his teammates calling out the, the countdown. He knew when to shoot. What a great half by Jake Kranz. And the Six Nations Snipers are lead 8-2 to two after 30 minutes of play. I'm Stephen Stamp. This is Arena Lacrosse League action on the JVI Sports Network. We'll We're back underway, 8-2. to two. Six Nations leads the Peterborough Timberman. And Quinn Palace with yet another win at the faceoff dot. Jake Kranz will pick up that loose ball throw. Oh, tries to get it to... Palace, but it's Riley Campbell picks it off. What a save by Chase Martin. Campbell was on his offside. Kind of tiptoed along the crease a little bit, but just didn't find a spot where he could bury it. Masters looking to come up with that ball. He does as it ricochets around the square boards here at the Peterborough Memorial Center. Peterborough setting up on offense. They need to get rolling here. It actually hasn't been a blowout game, it's eight to two, but Six Nations just picking corners. Two beautiful shots by Lane Smith. Luke Laskowitz with some great shooting. Travis Longbow, there's a shot by Caleb Wiles that doesn't connect, and here comes Briar Jonathan running the floor. Josh Watson back in transition defense, and he's gonna stay out and play. No, he's gonna go to the bench when he gets a chance, and they'll get their fifth defender out. Six Nations still short-handed. Travis Elvin in the penalty box. Six-five on the shot clock. Lewis pushing on Denton Miller. Joe Watson slowly making his way forward. He actually came close to an eight-second count as he was kind of meandering around on his way up. Croak steps back with Johnson on him. Martin grabs that ball as the pass got away. There's a long outlet pass to Torrey Van Every. He goes to the net. McWilliams ties him up. Campbell there, and there's a shot by, by Adams. Campbell comes up with the rebound. Gets away from him. Martin Whitaker slides it over. Whitaker gets the pass back now from Adams, and Whitaker lobs it over to Van Every. Whitaker has been playing some offense the last few games. Filling in here and there, and he is doing so again now for six nations. We're back to even strength. Van Every serving. He's got Adams on the far side. Sure, that's Laskowitz. Eight on the shot clock. Right on top is Adams. 
he is flattened as he shoots. And then that shot misses the net. Martin Whitaker checking in the crease and McWilliams wants a call and it probably should have happened. Ryan Masters is still advocating for one. I think they're gonna say the stick was outside the crease. Croak spins, very close to stepping on the crease line, but just avoids it and keeps going. Benedict steps over the top. McNulty with three on the shot clock passes, gets away from Croak. He's just gonna run over top of the ball, take a swat at it to slow things down and we'll start off with Six Nations in possession. Lane Smith leaves it there for Danton Miller. <laughs> Smith throws the shot fake. It's a shot from outside by Longboat. Danton Miller gets it back to Longboat off the rebound. He misses. And we have a breakaway for Eric Schul if he can corral this. Tory Van Every hustling back. There's Wasson with him. Wasson shoots. Oh, save by Martin. Wasson had him totally leading the wrong way, but Martin, great save to reach back and make that stop. And Wasson wants a check from behind. And probably has a case for something there. Josh Wasson tosses it over. Benedict throws it down along the boards. Wiles, watched by Longboat. That's Sawi Longboat. Matt Benedict, big pick by Wasson. Benedict's open to shoot and scores. Nice shot, and Chase Martin left way more space to his right than he realized. They're gonna say Quinn Palace went early, so Brett Coons gets the ball. <laughs> Peter seems to have switched from Brody Burkhoff to Coons for face-off duties. Burkhoff out there on the ball team. He's playing offense now, lined up against Jake Kranz as he stayed for a shift. No stick for Braden Hill, but he gets back and gets it. Smart play. Benedict trying to get a second one. We're gonna have a holding call. Back and forth with Smith. Now he's gonna shoot. That one stopped by Garrett Lewis. They battle for it. Lewis pushed over from behind by Laskowitz. And then Shule will run into him and there's a bunch of traffic down there. There should be some open space and now there is and Lewis will run it out. No delay a game called there and I think it's because the Six Nations players weren't really running into the player. They're just running for the bench and there happened to be not much space because they were behind the net. So Peter runs up with possession, and they set things up. Croak comes to the near side. They're killing this penalty. Six left on the shot clock as Benedict just trots around the top. Find the back pass is picked off. Benedict goes to the bench, and Pete Rennie hustles out, and makes the pass, and then the, the shot on the far side by Sawi Longboat. That one's stopped by Masters. Masters pointing ahead that there's someone up the floor. Pete Rennie is being harassed. Holds on and now makes the pass. That's an eight second count. Rennie probably needed to, well, clearly needed to just get rid of that ball a little quicker. He's trying to get the safe pass, which is smart play, but you only have eight seconds to get across center, so you needed to make some kind of pass a bit earlier. That one's picked off beautifully by Finley. He's gonna run. Turns Miller around and runs by him. Great speed, comes, shoots, scores! Beautiful play, Nick Finley. And it's 8-4. Peterborough with the first two goals of this second half. Burkhoff released from the box. He's gonna turn and play. He was heading to the bench and he turns, they say, you gotta turn and play D because Six Nations came up with it. Palace passes it down low. Burkhoff waiting for Martin Whitaker coming off the bench. And Adams hands it off to Briar Jonathan playing some offense. Jonathan, usually a defensive player. But there's a shot by Palace, nowhere near the net. It's gonna come back to him off the boards. He goes to the net, drives, but nice double team. They strip, oh, it's a great save. Oh, and there's a punch thrown. I think it was Coons yeah, that threw that punch at Martin Whitaker. Six Nations gets the ball at the other end of the floor. And behind the play, Coons has gone off. Whitaker's still out there, so we won't see a rematch of that particular altercation <laughs> or coming together of players. Not really an altercation. There's Palace behind the back pass to Whitaker, just out of his reach. Joe Watson goes after him, keeps the ball loose. They're tied up, so 
Garrett Lewis jumps in, and then Masters gets it. Penalty coming to Six Nations, so Peterborough's gonna pull the goalie. Wasson is actually gonna be slow getting into the bench, so they won't get six attackers out for a while. They almost went too many men, and the referee turned and looked right at the bench, so Peterborough waited. They've got 12 on the shot clock and six attackers. Wiles, thinking about shooting, passes back door, just misses Wasson. That's gonna be picked up by the snipers. It's gonna be a roughing call. Enjoying this comeback as Caleb Wiles starts the top of the power play. 7.15 to go in the third quarter. Croak down to Wasson. Wiles will get it to McMahon on the far side, then get it back. The stand perimeter for now. Over the top scores, Wiles bounces it through. Caleb Wiles changes the angle, and he can shoot. Peterborough starts with possession, and we're into the final seven minutes of the third quarter. Croak surveying. Up top to Benedict who drops it. Then Benedict gets on. Ashton Jacobs into the empty net. As Peter pulled the goalie for the extra player. And if you're wondering if Matt Benedict should have just grabbed on to Ashton Jacobs, pulled him down or held him to avoid him having a, a breakaway at the empty net, it would have been in that situation, it should have been a penalty shot awarded and an automatic goal. So not even a penalty shot, because uh, it's a penalty shot situation if you grab somebody on the breakaway. And that's a hold by Colton Armstrong, and somehow it's not called as Quinn Palace battling for the ball. Now Armstrong's trying to get it. Penalty coming to Palace as he went after Cole McWilliams. Now McWilliams having some words for him. Armstrong going the other way, the shot. And actually a Six Nations player was checking him, wound up ramming into Chase Martin. Point. So, yeah, maybe, but either way, it's an empty net goal, makes it 9-5, and Wasson misses the backdoor attempt for the quick stick, but the ball will bounce out to McMahon. Peterborough gets it back. Six to shoot, so McMahon will load up off the crossbar. McMahon is fixing his helmet, didn't see where it was, but he will get position on Briar Jonathan, and Cole McWilliams is there, or Wasson, sorry, almost runs over McMahon. Hidden ball trick but they know that McMahon has this wheel pass it down low. And now we have another penalty coming to Six Nations. Peterborough won't bother pulling the goalie because they've already got the man advantage. They score! Dan Mickle gets a dribbler through Chase Martin. So we'll have a face off after the goal and Peterborough does have a full two minute advantage. Coons, Palace. Coons pulls it out, and the first man there is Pete Rennie, but Ashton Jacobs just gets in the way. Nobody can come up with the ball. Nice hustle by Armstrong to get there. Palace knocks him away. This is a big battle for the ball, and still isn't, isn't gotten. And then finally, Ashton Jacobs comes up with possession for the snipers. Colton Armstrong knocks it free. What a great play. Armstrong, another player, has used up his junior eligibility. And I'll tell you, this league is doing wonders for his opportunities because I would think MSL team's gonna take a look at him now. I would think there's uh, definitely a senior B opportunity in the, in the offing for him. He's gotta have a chance, because he has played great, solid defense, tremendous speed, good solid transition, scores some goals. It's really what the Arena Lacrosse League is about, is preparing guys to step up to another level. But as you can see, the level of play here is good. Matt Croak steps in the crease as he was trying to tuck that one home. Croak certainly looking more comfortable, but not quite able to find, find the net today regularly. Lane Smith up top. Croak with a couple of assists today, but hasn't scored a goal. Peterborough gets that one back. And Nick Finley will run just as far as the bench and then hand it off to Caleb Wiles. <clears throat> Peter Burr still on the power play, setting up. They've got 11 seconds left on the shot clock. Croak circles out, tries to go back door. It's knocked down by Sawi Longboat and almost went in, but just went wide of the net. That long pass is too far for Briar Jonathan, but he will be the first guy to get there. There's a battle along the boards between a couple of players, and the ball comes back the other way with Caleb Wiles. 
Behind the back shot, thought he was going to make a pass to Croak, but decided to go for the shot instead. Boy, Caleb Wiles is a creative and dynamic offensive player, but there are times when he just tries to do a little too much himself. That may have been one of them. Gets the ball back. They've got six to shoot. Wasson, uh, underhand shot. That one stopped, and there's a battle for the loose ball. Croak was heading after it, but Six Nations comes up with it, gets it ahead to Lane Smith. Adams slowing things down. Back to even strength. 9-6 the score for Six Nations. 2.53 to go here in the third quarter. There's a drive out front, saved by Masters. They were finding holes early, but Masters is really sharpened up in the second half. McWilliams comes up with the ball. He'll run up to the offensive zone. Now he's just going to leave it there, and McNulty will run ahead. Mickle thought about letting that one fly. He's going to give it off to Benedict instead. He goes to the net, drives. A lot of fakes, misses on the shot. McNulty gets there first. Oh, nice behind the back pass and goal. They're going to say 30, the 30 had expired just before that twister by McMahon. That was a beautiful shot on a great pass by Benedict, but all just a little too late to count. And it's 9 6. We got 2.07 to go in the third quarter. <laughs> Shane Adams carrying the ball a lot more here in the third, in the second half. Palace, watched by Lewis, tries to get the pass across to the middle. It's knocked away. Oh, Lane Smith, low to high. Looking like Jordan Durston on that one. And he rips that home. Remember, Lane Smith, with his third goal of the game today, has three years of junior lacrosse still to play. Eric Schul arguing with the officials about something that happened down at the other end of the floor. Not sure whether they're saying that the goal should have counted or if there was a call that wasn't made at one end that was at the end or was made at one end and wasn't at the other. Coons and Palace again. And Palace yet again comes up with it. Shovels to Briar Jonathan. Two on four, so he's going to pull it out. <coughs> Tori Van Every. Van Every hasn't scored today, but boy, when he gets going, he can be a scoring machine. There's a shot from the outside, doesn't get through. It's still on the floor. Great defensive position by Armstrong, and then he runs through a check. He's breaking out with Campbell, two on one. Pulls it back, had to make the pass earlier or pull it back out, and he makes the right decision at that point. Looks like the lane was taken away. Great job by Martin Whitaker to go to back and take away the passing lane. Wiles now, thinking about the pass, shovels it, but it's to Benedict who's on his wrong side. To Croak, oh, what a save. Croak almost got that one. He flips it too far for Benedict. He's going to track it down. Benedict stripped. Nice work by Albrecht. There's a shot by Wiles that goes off of Chase Martin up into the mesh. Wiles will start with it again. Good hard rip. Just couldn't quite find a hole. Now he tries to drive to the net. Shoots off the post. What a play, and that is when Caleb Wiles is at his best, going to the net. He is absolutely acrobatic and sensational with the stick. At that time, though, just off the post. Had it been another inch or so to the inside, that would have gone off the post and gone in. Shule is all over Danton Miller because the follow-through hit him hard. Miller comes back and gives him a swat, and then Shule spins the stick and slashes Miller on the back of the leg. <laughs> Four-handed, four minutes shorthanded is not going to help them close that four-goal gap. Five-on-four power play, so Six Nations won't pull the goalie here with 12 seconds to go in the quarter. Palace shoots, misses. That's going to go over and back. And with six seconds left, Peterborough will actually have a chance on offense. <clears throat> Play's going to be blown in soon. They need to get everyone out there. There's a chance, the Bolts can't catch it. Behind the back, Croak almost. They got a chance, Croak with a beautiful shot. Martin makes the save. And it will end the third quarter, 10-6 in favor of the Six Nations Snipers. Now they'll go back to position and play blown in. Ball bounces out, rolls out, nobody knows where it is except for Braden Hill, and he'll hand it off to Quinn Palace, who throws it down in the corner, and Luke Laskowitz gives it back to him. Palace. Still has the face-off stick. That's the downside of being an offensive guy who takes face-offs. You have that face-off stick, and if you win it, you're stuck playing. 
with that, which on defense isn't quite as big a deal. But I don't know if that was a factor there, but he didn't catch it. And here comes Finley. Finley two on one. He's got the trailer. He's going to go to the net. He's taken down Danton Miller. And then... And then over on the far side, that was Joe Wasson who just grabbed onto the Six Nations player and dragged him down with him. And I'm not quite sure how that wasn't a holding call as he had a pretty good grip on him. <laughs> Croak will just rip it from way outside. And here comes Michael Holmes running the ball, then sets a pick and a goal. Tory Van Every, I told you he can shoot. And he picks a corner. Palace and Coons again, and Palace went way early. <laughs> he was locked and loaded before the whistle had even blown. So Peterborough gets possession, but there's, there's orange jerseys all around Coons, who is just cradling and cradling, doesn't realize he's lost the ball. Now he's gonna try and corkscrew great Kranz. Kranz gets away. Nice save by Masters on the twister by Kranz. Good effort by Coons to try and slow him down, and that may have forced Kranz' hand a bit on the shot as there was another Peterborough player barreling down. Lane Smith has the ball. <laughs> Peter were pointing to him because Six Nations did the hidden ball trick and Lane Smith was like over cradling like some guys do to try and pretend they have the ball when they don't. Low shot off a off defender off the post. That one's off Masters. Lewis picks it up with people all over it's batted into the crease by Lane Smith. He's got it on front on the top. Out to Laskowitz, out to Laskowitz. There's a shot by Miller well wide. Could be over and back and less. No, Quinn Palace gets there. And Six Nations will set back up in the power play. Oh, the over and back is called. Again, there's no white line here because it is an MSL carpet used by the Peterborough Lakers. So there's no center line as that's not relevant in major series lacrosse in senior A. So they have to use the seam at the middle of the floor. This makes it a little trickier for everybody to notice. Caleb Wiles wants a holding call or an interference call. He was grabbed, he felt, while the pass was coming. Six Nations sets up in the offensive zone. Smith back to Laskowitz. Six Nation goal, number eight, Tony Van Nice fade by Longboat. The pass across, though, is picked off or at least knocked down. And Masters looking for an outlet. Steps out of the crease, makes a short pass to Wasson. Peterborough being exceptionally cautious coming off the bench to not get too many men calls. Lob pass back to McMahon. Wasson takes it on the far side. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Here comes Shul out of the penalty box. Wasson lets one rip, saved by Chase Martin. Behind the back by Caleb Wiles. That one's stopped by Martin. Tory Van Every up top. Dangle shoots, scores. And on one of the restraining lines, Chancey Johnson and Brody Burkoff having a chat, and they're gonna go. <clears throat> They've already dropped the sticks. Chancey Johnson just walked away and started peeling off, and now they're gonna go. Burkoff and Johnston both have spent plenty of time fighting. Johnson throws the first punch down. Burkoff lands a couple of lefts. Burkhoff filling him in. He is by far getting the best of this. Throws a right, he's got him jerseyed. Johnson is just trying to protect himself at this point. The ref's getting ready to step in when they need to. Johnson, a bit of a recovery, and then Burkhoff gets his hand free. He's gonna grab him by the leg. Flips him over to the ground. And this is where Burkhoff has to be careful. They pat him on the back, he gets up, and he goes to the penalty box. Because Burkhoff yesterday, we talked about he had a fight and he was kicked out for being the aggressor. They said he was holding on to the face mask. His jersey ripped a while ago and in a game in Paris. They didn't have an extra with him. They had to sew it up in the front. I don't see a, the, anybody taking a sewing kit over, so Burkhoff's maybe okay. And Six Nations has the ball off the faceoff. Longboat. Travis Longboat, that is, gets it up to Laskowitz. Lane Smith, 10 on the shot clock, rips one well wide. It's tracked down by Laskowitz. Five to shoot. Oh, and he scores from 
<laughs> the usual restraining line area, pretty much. Palace and Coons again, 10.58 to go, 13-6, six. six Nations. <clears throat> nice job by Coons to get position so that Joe Watson can pick it up. McWilliams shoots, saved by Chase Martin. Six Nations setting up on offense. Longboat, assist on last goal, passes it over. It's one of the easier assists you'll get. <laughs> Throwing it out to Laskowitz up top. Martin Whitaker gets to Van Every. I thought that was coming to Longboat, but Tori Van Every goes for the, the hat trick, steps in the crease after the save by Cole Murray. <laughs> Croak, thinking shot, passes up top. Benedict gives it off to McNulty. Remember, we'll have more arena lacrosse action today. Toronto Monarchs and Oshawa Outlaws. That's a big battle for second place. Zaboltz tries to make the pass to McNulty through traffic, but that was low and, and behind him. Not much chance, and here comes Six Nations rumbling up the floor. Michael Holmes will get it into the offensive zone, then just leave it there. 9.45 to go in the fourth quarter. I'm Stephen Stamp. This is Arena Lacrosse League Action on JBI Sports Network. Oh, nice quick stick attempt on the back door. But just missing was Shane Adams. Here comes Colton Armstrong with some wheels. Spins, shoots, just about got it. He had an opening. And they're going to say that touch to Six Nations player. I didn't think it did as it went up into the mesh. That ball hit well in front of the net, or way up in the crease. Looked like he just went straight into the match, but Peterborough gets a break. Wiles to Watson. A big pick by Lewis on Kranz, but that shot misses by a bunch. Just hits the bottom of the boards and is grabbed by Albrecht. He's going to run up and join the offense. He's certainly adept at either end of the floor, but he will stick with his defensive role today by handing it off to Van Every. Who runs into a big check from Coons, then cuts to the middle. Laskowitz looks for him. Goes up to Travis Longboat. Danton Miller rip scores. What a snipe by Danton Miller. Palace with another face-off win. He's gonna just let this one fly. He misses. Comes all the way out. That was very close to over and back, but a nice little jump step by Sawi Longboat to save it. And Six Nations keeps possession. Laskowitz comes off the screen. Tries to go behind the back to Palace. Doesn't connect. Adams with the cheeky little roll shot, but Murray all over that one. Cole McWilliams. He's had himself a pretty decent game, switching back to the defensive zone. Definitely a couple times where he looked like an offensive guy trying to adjust to defense, but not bad overall, I would say. Wiles, that shot. <laughs> it's Brayton Hill. They go back door, but it gets away from Mickle. I think it may have been tipped by a stick. I think it was Brayden Hill got a bit on it. And... Six Nations will just cover things up and let the shot clock expire. 7.43 to go as Six Nations goes up front. Danton Miller hands it off. Miller, the last goal scorer. Travis Longboat. Spin by Torrey Van Every. He's going to the net. Falls down. And the ball's knocked loose by Garrett Lewis, who gives him one more whack while he's on the floor. Six Nations gets it back. Three to shoot. It gets to Van Every behind the back. No goal. Nice save by Murray. And a penalty coming. We've had a lot of opposite numbers tangling today. This time it's Joe Wasson and Tori Van Every, number 88 respectively for the two teams. We've seen Eric Schuel and Lane Smith, the 33s. So Van Every goes to the box and Peterborough goes to the power play. 7.14 to go. We'll take the official timeout. It's 14-6. Snipers. So it's a slash to Van Every, putting Peterborough on the man up. I hate when I say that. I hate when other people say it. It's the man advantage or the power play. Man up's a field term. I'm not going to bring it into the box. McMahon far side to Croak. Backhand pass. Doesn't get to Mickle because 
Jake Kranz. Active stick got on it, but Mickle gets it back. Now we're going to say loose ball push on McMahon, pushing Kranz into the boards, and Six Nations takes possession. <laughs> this has been vintage Drake Kranz today. Terrific game for him. Oh, Quinn Ballas shoulders into Garrett Lewis, flicks it behind the back, and finds the net. What a shot by Pallas. I believe that's his fourth of the day. So, not really missing the big guns. Roger Weiss, the league's leading scorer, and Craig Point. Pete Rennie comes up with the loose ball off the faceoff. Six and a half to go here in the fourth quarter. 15 to nothing, Six Nations. And we're going to have a too many men call, and there was lots of yelling about it as Peterborough had six guys in the offensive set and their goalie out there. Burkhoff and Johnson are released. Their five minutes for fighting has elapsed. And now the snipers will go. We'll have an edge. Well, actually, we'll be four on four for a bit. Then the snipers will have an abbreviated power play. Palace will start up top. <clears throat> oh, nice pass through. Palace stopped by Murray, who went down to one knee but stayed high with his body because he realized he needed to be up covering the top corner and did so. Nice save by Murray. Lane Smith gets the ball off the rebound, drives to the net, save again, and Smith stepped in the crease. Outlet pass to Shule. Here comes Longboat off the bench. She'll hand it off to Josh Wasson. <clears throat> Wiles takes it up top. McMahon right in the Williams. chest pad on the sniper logo of Chase Martin. Six Nations setting up in the offensive zone, taking their time. Here comes Tory Van Every, and they go to the power play with 12 left on the shot clock. Van Every in his spot. Quinn Palace will just rip it. He used it. Van Every as a bit of a distraction. Everyone watching him going to his spot, and Palace up at the top just goes sidearm and the big smile after sniping that one just inside the post. Battle for the ball, and somebody's laying on top of it. <coughs> Peterborough will get possession over to Dan Meckel. They've just announced some silent auction, auction winners, and I believe, although they mispronounced it, I believe it was my sister who has won a uh, Peterborough Timberman Shamrocks jersey, the pa St. Patrick's Day. They are lovely jerseys. I'm going to be a little bit jealous, i got to admit, of that... Uh, that green jersey with the uh, lumberjack pattern on the shoulder cap. There's some sweet jerseys in this league. I mentioned how much I like the snipers. Oshawa is pretty nice. Boy, there's, some, there's some good uniforms. We'll see Oshawa playing Toronto in today's second half of the doubleheader. That shot by Longboat is wide. Garrett Lewis didn't quite get it. So there's a shot and a goal. Shane Adams gets on the scoreboard. Going dead overhand. Sticks it just inside the post. Seventeen to six, the score now. Four oh eight to play, and the snipers just running away with this one. And there's another one by Quinton Palace, almost casually flicking that one behind him. Boy, this was, remember, it was 6-2 to two at the half. 
Six Nations got a couple, and they were it was eight to four. Peterborough got another one. They were creeping back in it, and then Six Nations has just run away since then. And boy, Peterborough is looking like a tired team at this point. It's just something more enervating about playing playing offense or defense when you're getting sw getting thumped like this. Laskowitz steps around the screen, tries to make the pass down, gets it to Sawi Longboat playing offense. Shane Adams gets it on the rebound, fresh 30. We've got 3.11 to go. That pass gets away, but it'll be tracked down by Laskowitz. Laskowitz at the top. Sawi Longboat thinking about a shot. We're gonna have a moving pick called against the snipers in Peterborough will pick up possession. Cole McWilliams rips it ahead. Wasson off the bench. He passes it back to McMahon. Back to Wasson who hits the cutting. Wiles, great play, great save. McMahon, oh, Chase Martin, what a recovery by Chase Martin after that save to be ready to take away the shooting chance for Cody McMahon. Wiles rolls across the top. Quick stick by Wasson. Martin stops it. Today, today's three stars, a tough selection. The first selection is actually fairly easy. Quinn Palace, dominant at the dot. Four goals, four assists. There's a face save by Murray on Martin Whitaker. But Palace with actually five goals, four assists now, I believe. And he has been sensational today. Our second star, also from Six Nations, with four goals and four assists, Luke Laskowitz, who's played such a game, showing a lot of development in his game. He has had trouble in the past holding onto the ball. There's a shot by Colton Armstrong that goes up into the match, and it'll be Six Nations ball. And strong effort by Armstrong, continuing to try and run the ball and force things in transition, push the pace. But uh, Laskowitz really working on his team play. He had been uh, drawn some criticism for holding the ball too much, not really playing as part of a concept and he has really changed that. Probably some work with the Rochester Nighthawks helping him, but he has been great playing for the Six Nations Snipers. And again, just what this league is for is helping guys develop their games to let them go to the next level and Laskowitz certainly preparing for that. Our third star is a difficult decision. Oh, it's an eight second count on Six Nations, 128 to go. As the Timbermen get the ball, or the Snipers get the ball, Peter Rowe couldn't get it over mid floor in time. I'm gonna go with Jake Kranz, number 17, has been outstanding defensively. There's a shot that misses. Nick Finley is gonna pass it ahead. A breakaway for Lewis. Ashton Jacobs hustling. Nice shot by Lewis to beat Chase Martin, who is the other man I was considering, because he's been very good in the Six Nations net. When you put up 18, it's easy to forget that the goalies had to make some saves to keep it at seven now the other direction. But Final minute of play, Palace throws it down low. Eighteen to seven, the score. Likely to be the final, because Six Nations isn't looking like they're gonna make much of an effort. They might, as we wind down, and Palace shoots. I actually thought that might have been in. And Peter goes for the long outlet pass to Croak. They're gonna keep pushing in the final 35 seconds. Last man off the bench. As McNulty gives it up, Mickels bouncer stopped by the chest of Chase Martin. Wasson or Croak waiting for a spot and scores. No, they're going to say no goal. A man in the crease. I think it was another player who was in the crease when Croak took the shot. And Matt Croak says, "I've been off for a month and a half. I finally snipe one, and you're going to take it away. Just give me the goal." It's 18-7. Not happening. Cole McWilliams d's up Tory Van Every. Van Every over to Johnson. 10 seconds left. It's going to be an 18 to 7 final for the Six Nations Snipers. They move to 8 and 4. Oh, a shot there and another shot. I did not think Six Nations was going to shoot at the end there. But Chancey Johnson goes behind the back. May not have won himself any admirers with that one. The final will be 18 to 7. Six Nations goes to 8 and 4. Peter Rowe drops to 3 and 9. 